piece of the 12, all right? We back at it. Wisdom of Solomon, the 18th chapter. All right, I got 91 slides on this, so it's going to be a long one, all right? Get your notepad, your pen, your popcorn, whatever. All right, let's kick it off. Wisdom of Solomon, the 18th chapter, in the first verse. It says, Never, Nevertheless, thy saints had a very great light, whose voice they hearing and not seeing their shape, because they also had not suffered the same things, they counted them happy. Now the things that they're talking about, the suffering and the great light, you have to go into Wisdom of Solomon, the 17th chapter, which I already did a video on slightly. Uh, just watch my video. Just watch the video I did on the movie Smile. I think I titled the movie Smile Explain when I went into Wisdom of Solomon, the 17th chapter. But that's just what this beginning part is talking about. So in order to get context, you'd have to go to the previous chapter, of course. But um, yeah, and this light is talking about is that pillar of light from a cloud, which is really a chariot, which was lighting the way for the nation of Israel. All right, now let's go this again. Nevertheless, thy saints had a very great light whose voice they hearing and not seeing their shape because they also had not suffered the same things. They counted them happy. All right, now the, it says thy saints. That tells you right now that the, thy saints are the Israelites, okay? Because it says thy saints. All right, you go to this word saint. All right, this word saint in the, in the, in the Bible dictionary. One separated from the world and consecrated to God by covenant. Okay, the covenant was made with the nation of Israel. And it's one separated from the world and consecrated to God. All right, so that means that thy saints, the saints are the Israelites. Okay. Let's um, prove that. All right. One separated from the world and consecrated to God. We were separated from the world and consecrated to God. We're gonna we're gonna get this at uh we're gonna start at Exodus nineteen and three on down. It says and Moses went up into unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying, Thou shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant. Now, this was spoken to who? Jacob, the house of Jacob, the children of Israel. Keep my covenant. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. All right. So the saints are separated from the world and consecrated to God. We're separated from the other peoples. All right. We're a peculiar treasure, a special treasure. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Alright, so that so thy saints, again, the saints, the saints are the Israelites. Alright. As a matter of fact, we were sanctified. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, 33 and 10 i'm gonna start at 10 and all men are from the ground and adam was created of earth in much knowledge the lord hath divided them and made their ways diverse some of them hath he blessed and exalted and some of them he sanctified and set near himself who did he sanctify and set near himself again the israelites but some of them hath he cursed and brought low and turned out of their places all right, let's go to this word sanctified. This word sanctified means to be set apart, consecrated, separate, to be separate. So he separated us from the nations, all right, above all people and holy nation. The word holy means separate, a separate nation, okay? Let's get one more. Let's go to Second Ezra. Actually, I might have another one after that. But let's go to 2 Ezra uh, chapter 5. And we're going to start at verse... Um, we're going to start at verse 22. All right. And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding. And I began to talk with the Most High again. And said, O Lord, that bearest rule of every wood of the earth and of all the trees thereof. 
thou hast chosen the one only vine. All right, so he chose one vine out of all the trees, right? And of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen the one pit. All right, so he chose one pit. And of all the flowers of thereof, one lily. So he chose one lily out of all the flowers. And of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled the one river. So one river. And of all builded cities, thou hast hollowed Zion unto thyself. All right, so out of all the cities, Zion, which is the nation, which is part of the nation of Israel, was held unto the Lord Himself. In other words, it was, in other words, it was sanctified and set near Himself. Okay. And of all the fowls thou hast created, thou hast named one, the one dove. And of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided the one sheep. And among the multitudes of people, thou hast gotten the one people. And unto this people. Whom thou lovest, whom thou lovest, thou gavest a law that is approved of all. So the law was given to the saints, the prophets, the children of Israel. This light, this great light that was given was given to the children of Israel. Okay. Um, let's keep going. Um, let's talk about this darkness part real quick. Um, nevertheless, thy saints had a very great light. All right. And like I said, Wisdom of Solomon 17 talks about the great darkness. Uh, but that's in its own video. Um, Salakia. Give me one second. Exodus 10 and 23. Let's, let's, or Exodus 10 and 20. Let's get the account of that darkness. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven. That there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. So the darkness is so dark you could feel it, man. But it was towards Egypt, not the children of Israel, because we know what? We had a very great light. Okay. Um, Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. So we did, so that's what it means by uh, we were we were happy because we did not suffer the same things. We had our light. Our light was given to us by Yahweh Bashim al Shah. Okay. And a movie kind of like where it sees and where when they were looking in the darkness, what they saw was terrorists. A movie that kind of illustrates that is the movie. Uh, what's the movie? Bird Box. Have you ever seen it? But anyway, let's get to the second chapter or excuse me, second verse. OK, Wisdom of Solomon, the 18th chapter in the second verse. But for that, they did not hurt them now of whom they had been wrong before. They thanked them and besought them pardon. For that they had been enemies. Alright. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, we were the enemies of Egypt. But they ended up they ended up uh beseeching us a pardon. Alright. And I'm gonna get that. We're gonna go to Exodus ten and verse seven. <laughs> you know what actually I'm gonna start at uh Exodus ten and uh five. But seven's what I want. And they shall cover the face of the earth that one cannot be able to see the earth. And they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hell. And shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy houses and the houses of all thy servants and the houses of all Egyptians, the Egyptians. Which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen. Since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day, and he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. So he's about to, he's telling them about the plague that's going to ensue Egypt, one of the plagues. Now check this out. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? So they're saying, hey, man, let these people go. We need to get pardoned from this. All right, let them go. 
they have been wrong before they thank them. All right. But, um, and let's get that again. Exodus 12 and 33. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. So they was urgent to try to get Israel up out of there. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. You see that? They had been enemies, but they sat part of them and they thanked them. We got favor. And they gave us, they, they get, <laughs> we ran in their pockets. They gave us their, uh, their gold and silver. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon, uh, ver, eight, chapter 18, verse 3. Instead, whereof thou gavest them a burning pillar of fire, both to be a guide of the unknown journey and a harmless son to entertain them honorably. All right, like we already went over that. All right, that was that very great light that was given to the saints, which are the Israelites. Okay. And it was uh, to be a guide to us for our unknown journey and a harmless son to entertain them honorably. All right. And that's what you see in the sky every once in a while. All right. Believe it or not. All right. As like it says, a harmless son to entertain them honorably. Hey, we see, we look up these things. We have hope. All right, I, I cover more on this, on these, on this pillar, on this burning pillar of fire. I cover more on this about the chariots, uh, on a video I did on the movie Nope. It's called Nope Movie Explained. Okay, if you want to watch a movie, if you want to get more on that. Okay. Now let's go to chapter eighteen, verse four, Wisdom of Solomon. For they were worthy to be deprived of light, and imprisoned in darkness. This is talking about the Egyptians. They were worthy. Of being deprived of light and in prison of darkness. Who had kept thy sons shut up. Who are the sons? Israel. As a matter of fact, the word Israel means prince of power. All right. Prince of God. All right. And then the scriptures also tell you what. Israel is my son, even my firstborn. All right. So they had kept thy sons shut up. But whom the, uh, but whom, by whom the uncorrupt light of the law was to be given unto the world. So the light of the law was given to who? The sons, the Israelites, the men of the Lord, the men of Israel to be specific, was to be given unto the world. All right? And they tried to keep us shut up. They would not let our people go, man. All right? And we've been taught, it said what? And we've been taught, called the light as well. All right? We were given the light of the law, the sons. Scripture said in Matthew 5 and 14, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So we're called the light of the world, man. Huh? All right. And the light of the world really is this knowledge, this Bible. Okay. But we can understand it. Why? Because we're the sons. Um, and we're going to get that. Proverbs 4 and 18. Let's prove that the uh, uh, scriptures. Hold on. Did I get that first? Or let's prove that the scriptures is uh, the our light. Proverbs 4 and fit and 21. Excuse me. Proverbs 4 and 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light. All right. That shineth more and more onto the perfect day. All right. And this and this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, this Bible gives us this light. It's what it's what keeps us alive. It's what quickens us. Okay. Um. And let's prove that we're the sons. Okay, let's prove that. Kept thy sons shut up. We're the sons, right? Exodus 4 and 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So Israel is called a son of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, of the Most High, really. We're the sons of the Most High. All right, and the only begotten son of the Father is Yahweh Shai. But we're princes also. We're sons also. Right? Let's get another scripture proving we're the children. Deuteronomy 14 and 1. Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. So we uh, are the children of the Lord our God. All right? 
Let's keep reading on. And once again, we're the Saints. All right. Wisdom of Solomon 18 and 5. Okay, I'm making good time. And when they had determined to slay the babes of the saints. See, the babes of the saints. What babies were they trying to slay? The Israelite babies, man. And when they had determined to slay the babies of the saints, one child being cast forth and saved to reprove them. Thou tookest away the multitude of their children and destroyedest them altogether in a mighty water. Who was that one child that was saved to reprove them? That would be uh, Moses. But remember what the scriptures tell you. Tell you the scriptures are double to that which is. There's also a second person that came uh, to reprove us and to save us. And that's Yahweh Shai, who is ignorantly called Jesus Christ. All right, but let's get that one child being cast forth and saved to reprove them. Let's get that. Um. Uh, let's or first hold on. First things first, the babes of the saints. Let's prove that we're the saints again. Deuteronomy thirty three and one. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. All right. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousand of saints. From his night, from his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yeah, see a fiery law. See that a fiery law. We saw something similar to that earlier. It said what? The light of the law, the fiery law. All right, fire is a symbol for light. You can use a torch to know where you're going. All right. Uh, Deuteronomy thirty-three and three. Yeah, he loved the people, all his saints. And the saints are the children of Israel. This is the same chapter. Are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Everyone shall receive thy words. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. So we are, in fact, the saints. All right. But yeah, like I said, the one that the child that was cast forth to reprove them and save us at the time by using a mighty water was Moses. But also we know there's a second person that came to do uh to do it again and that is you how shy let's get that in deuteronomy 18 and chapter four in a uh, verse 14 or 15 the lord thy god will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me unto him shall ye hearken see that who was that prophet yeah, how shy? Okay. Um, and let's prove, or let's just go into the fact. Yes, they were overcome by the mighty water. They were destroyed by the mighty water. Exodus one and twenty two. Or first, let's get the account of him trying to slay, slay the babes of the saints. Okay, let's get that first. Exodus one and twenty two. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river and every daughter ye shall save alive. Okay, you see that? So the men of the Lord are the saints. And he was trying to and he was trying to kill the babes of the saints. See that? And why did he want to keep the daughters alive? Because if the daughters if the daughters procreated with the Egyptians, their children would be progeny of the Egyptians, seeing that you are who your father is. You can get that in numbers. All right, when it tells you the line of the pedigrees based on their fathers. All right. Um, but we know that there was one child who was saved. Let's get that account. All right, so while they were, trying, while they were drowning the bays of the saints, there was one child that was saved. Who was that child? That was Moses, proven that. Exodus chapter 2. All right. And there went a man... Of the house of Levi and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not long, longer hide him, she took for him an ark of the bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit that what would be done to him. And this child was Moses, okay? 
And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. This was Moses, okay? That was the one that was saved to reprove them, okay? Um, but there's also another another who came, right? That prophet, like unto Moses, okay? That's in Matthew, the second chapter, where it also happened like this, right? It also happened like this again, where he had to... Uh, People sought to kill them. A man in a position of power. Uh, first it was Pharaoh. Pharaoh had sought to kill Moses, right? But someone, uh, Herod had sought to kill Yehoshai. All right, Matthew 2 and 1. Now when Yehoshai was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem. All right, now let's come back to... Um, let's go back to 13 so we're going to find what Herod wanted to do and when they were departed behold the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word for Herod will seek the young child to, to destroy him so this is another account of a guy in a position of power who seek to destroy a child. But that child was saved. Why was that child saved? That child was saved to reprove them that took away the most of the children and destroyed this them altogether in a mighty water. That was Moses. Yahushua came to, to reprove us again and save us, really, and reprove the nations. Which is why when he comes back, he's coming back with a sword. Okay? All right, let's get verse six. We're making good time, I believe. When we're in, we're in 22 minutes. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon 18 and six. Of that night were our fathers certi certified afore that assuredly knowing unto what oaths they had given credence, they might be afterwards be of good cheer. That's right, because we made a covenant with Yahweh by Shem We made a covenant. Okay. Remember, we had the white, we had the, we had to smear that blood on our doors so the plague would not get us man remember that was the thing that was a that was a contract in blood okay um we were certified all right we were certified uh and again the lord put a difference between us and israel let's get that in exodus 11 and 4 on down and Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. And all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of beasts. Okay? And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt. Such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel, because we're certified. All right. That night. Remember, it happened at night. At midnight. All right. It happened at night. We were certified on that night. All right. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast. That ye may know. How that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. So right there, he put a difference. We were stamped. We were certified. We was justified. Okay? Because he didn't kill our firstborn in this plague. But he killed the firstborns of the Egyptians, both small and great. The pharaohs to the maid service. Okay? Um, <laughs> it's pretty plain. So he may put a difference between Egypt and Israel. Um... Let's go wisdom of Psalm 18 and 7. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous and destruction of the enemies who were saved, who were saved. By, remember, remember. Cast forth and saved to reprove them. The babes of the saint. That's Moses, right? He kept to save the saints. Now the saints are being called 
the saints are being called the righteous salvation of the righteous who was saved in that in that scenario israel was saved in that scenario okay the waters were lifted and flooded the egyptians for our sakes salvation of the righteous who are the righteous the israelites and destruction of the enemies destruction of the enemies okay who are our enemies well you can read psalms the 83rd chapter it tells you specifically that the nations are our enemies so our salvation is predicated on the destruction of our enemies that have wronged us similar to how it was just like it was actually just like it was with egypt all right and we are saved the righteous the israelites really the elect the one-third all right but really really all of israel is saved at the end of the day but that's a video for another day but um yeah salvation is of the righteous and at this at this time it was talking about israel because the righteous is israel the elect okay jeremiah 3 and 23 truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains in other words the other nations a hill is a smaller nation and the multitude of mountains mountains are large nations and salvation is vain hope for okay uh from the hills and the mountains truly in the lord our god is the salvation of israel see that salvation of the righteous the salvation of israel so it's a vain it's a vain thing to hope for the salvations of the hills and the mountains you understand okay uh let's get that again psalms three and eight salvation belongeth unto the lord thy blessing is upon thy people who are those people israel okay salah let's go to isaiah 45 and 15 right verily thou art a god that hidest thyself god O oh god of israel the savior okay so he's the savior for the nation of israel you read that in acts 5 and 30 on down also in matthew the first chapter which i did include i include both of them see all praises um matthew 1 and 20 uh, but while he thought these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived is in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now check this out. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yehowashai, for he shall save his people from their sins. Who are those people? Israelites. Okay, his people. Acts 5 and 29, right? Let's prove that. Acts 5 and 29. Then Peter and other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. So the God of our fathers raised up Shai, who they commonly called Jesus right now check this out him hath god exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior see that remember god of israel the savior to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sins see that that's it <laughs> see that uh now coming back to this okay so now we got the righteous we de we define the righteous okay well who are the enemies so so of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous and the destruction of the enemies okay so who is the enemy i'll show you who the enemy is let's go to psalms chapter 83 we're going to start at one and two and then we're going to go down all right, Psalms chapter 83, verse 1. A song of a song or psalm of Asaph. Keep not thou silence, O God, 
Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies, see that, thine enemies, make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. It says thine enemies. We're going to find out who those, who those enemies are. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. And they, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be in no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Okay, so that's their whole decree. Who are these enemies? Who are Who is this council? I'm about to tell you. The tabernacles of Edom. And the Ishmaelites of Moab. And the Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek. The Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Ashur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Salah. So these nations are confederate in alliance, in agreement. And these nations, the word nation means race. These races are against the children of Israel, okay? But ultimately, they're going to be destroyed. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin, at the brook of Kaisan, which perished at Endor. They became as the dung for the earth. So guess what, man? Salvation of the righteous and the destruction of our enemies. I just gave you the list of our enemies. All right. Who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Oh, my God, make them like a will as the stubble before the wind. All right. So ultimately, they're going to be destroyed because they're our enemies and we're going to be saved. Hopefully, I, hopefully I'm up that elect number that makes it out of here, man. Okay. And the heathen rage, man. <laughs> and they're going to be destroyed again. Now, all, now, I'm not saying that all heathen are going to be wiped off the map because they have to go into servitude. But their nations will be destroyed. All right. Their empires, their rulerships, all that. All right. They will not be in power again. All right. Psalms chapter two. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? And remember, it's a vain thing. For <laughs> remember, it's a vain thing for salvation to be hoped for from these people. man. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saints. So they're actually against the Lord and his anointed. Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I'm going to go down to here. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. Like I said, going into servitude. And the uttermost parts of the earth of thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel, man. All right, that's just it, man. Uh, <laughs> and again, the enemy. All right, Esau's our enemy. Let's go back. The Tabernacles of Edom, okay? Well, let's get the fate of Edom. <laughs> well, let's get the fate of these people. Let's just prove what I'm saying real quick. All right, salvation is of the righteous the israelites are the people that are righteous and destruction of the enemies let's prove that it's not talking about salvation for these people even though i already proved it obadiah 1 and 18 and the house of jacob shall be a fire and the house of joseph a flame and the house of esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them and there shall not be any remaining of the house of esau for the lord hath spoken it so there's not going to be any remaining of the house of esau now let's go to Numbers 24 and 20. And when he looked on Amalek, Amalek is the grandson of Esau, by the way. He took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations. But his latter end shall be that he perish forever. So Amalek's going to perish forever. Uh, there's not going to be any remaining of the house of Esau. Now let's get Deuteronomy 23 and 3. And Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their 10th generation. Shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord. 
forever. So Ammonite and Moabite will never enter into the congregation of the Lord. So salvation is of the righteous. Okay. The righteous are the Israelites. Let's let's move on. Let's read on. I've pretty much made my point. Let's get some more though. Just to prove that. Because you can say, oh, well, the Lord changed his mind. No, he didn't. Numbers 23 and 19, right? God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? And what did the Lord speak? What did the Lord speak? He said, there will not be any remaining in the house of Esau. Why? Because the Lord spoke it so. Okay, so coming back. It said, hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So that's going to happen. All right, Malachi 3 and 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. All right, so sons of Jacob will not be consumed. Why? Because the Lord changes not. He don't change. So the Lord didn't change his mind. All right. And the Lord, our Savior, Yahweh Shai, doesn't change either. Let's go to Matthew, the 10th chapter, and the 5th verse. These 12, sent, these 12 Yahweh Shai sent forth the commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we told them specifically to not go into the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So at any time when the, when the, when the uh, Gentiles are being told that they can be saved, those are Israelites with a Gentile state of mind. I did a whole video on that. You can watch this titled, How We Became Gentiles. Okay, I'm not going to go all the way in that again. All right, so if you disagree with me, just go watch that video. It proves it. Hebrews 13 to 8. Yahweh Shai Mashiach, the same yesterday and today and forever. So who they call Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. All right, and he commanded them to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and preach the kingdom of heaven was at hand. Okay? All right, we're done with that. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, in the 18th chapter, and the 8th verse. For wherewith thou didst punish our adversaries, our adversaries, these other nations, by the same thou didst glorify us whom thou hadst called. So in the same way that our adversaries were punished, we were glorified. So we were glorified in their punishments. You understand that? It goes hand in hand. Okay? Let's go to the Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, and verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. All right. And we do that now. We're, remember, I told you we're the righteous. All right. The men of the Lord, the Israelites. All right. The hopeful elect. All right. And we stand in great boldness in front of the face of them who afflicted us. All right. Chiefly, we stand in front of Esau, Edom, but we stand in front of all these nations, man. And they made no account of our labors. You know, they think like we just doing this for nothing. They tell you niggas get a job. All right, uh, stop making videos, whatever, man. Check this out. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. All right, so they're going to be amazed, man. They're going to see. All right, and the same way, like I said, <laughs> Uh, like I told you, um, or like it told you, when our adversaries are punished, we will be glorified. All right, it goes hand in hand. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb and a reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is the numbered among the children of God and his lot is among the saints? And we know the children of God are the Israelites. All right. And his saints are the Israelites. So while they make fun of us and do all this and make all these videos and try to debunk us, discredit us, do whatever the, whatever it is they want to do, it don't matter, man. It don't matter. And they're going to see that day of our salvation, the strangest of our salvation. And that strangest of our salvation includes the punishments to our adversaries. Okay. Read on. Wisdom of Solomon 18 and 9. For the righteous children of good men did sacrifice secretly and with one consent made a holy law. All right, the holy law was given to the Israelites, the righteous children. 
that the saints should be like partakers of the same good and evil. The father's now singing out the songs of praise. All right. And the saints should be like partakers of the same good and evil. That's right. We were partake partakers of the same good and evil. Like when you read the curse of Deuteronomy, it says when both these things come to pass, both the blessing and the curse. All right. So we had to get the good and the evil. Okay. And how do you and how do you assess what's good and evil? You have to use the Bible. All right. Which is the tree of which is the tree of knowledge. All right. But first, let's go back to the righteous. We are the righteous. It says the righteous children. We are the righteous children. The upright ones, the righteous. All right. The upright ones. How do we know that we're the upright ones? Let's go to the scriptures. Jeremiah 51 and 17. The other ones, they're not upright. Jeremiah 51 and 17. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molten image is falsehood. And there is no breath in them. All right. So every man is brutish in his knowledge. They have graven image. They set up this and that. They pray to idols. Rather that be Buddha. That big ass rock in uh, the Middle East. Or whatever man. They are vanity. The work of errors in the time of their visitation. They shall perish. Now check this out. So every man is brutish in his knowledge. Except one. Jeremiah 51 19. The portion of Jacob. Is not like them. For he is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. So Jacob, the Israelites, we're not like them, man. We're, and we're the right, we're the upright ones. Now you have wicked Israelites, of course. But the upright ones, meaning what? The only people that come to the degree of the upright are the Israelites. Specifically, the elect. Because though there are the wicked Israelites, you always will have the remnant. All right, the ones that still seek after Yahweh Bashimi Shai. Hopefully, y'all understand that. All right, let's get that again in Second Ezra three and thirty-one. Second Ezra three and thirty-one. I do not remember how this way may be left. Are they then of Babylon better than they of Zion? So he's asking a question: Is Babylon better than Zion then, or is there any other people that knoweth thee? beside israel another question mark or what generation has so believed thy covenants as jacob all right so and they're gonna find out there are no other nations <laughs> that do so it's just israel all right they don't even know the most high other people that know it thee beside israel no man and yet their reward appeareth not and their labor hath no fruit for i have gone here and there through the heathen and i see that they flow in wealth and think not upon thy commandments. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance, and there is also that dwell the world. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. See that? Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people have so kept thy commandments. Thou shalt find that Israel by name hath kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. You see that? But not the heathen. So they don't keep it, man. They're brutish in knowledge. But Jacob is not like them. So that by the proxy, we are the righteous children. We are the upright ones, okay? Let's get that one more time. <laughs> Actually, I got a couple, I think. Let's get that two more times. Uh, but let's prove, let's prove, let's go back. Hold on, let's prove um, that the saints should be like partakers of the same good and evil. All right, you can only understand what's good and evil according to the scriptures. The scriptures are, the scriptures is the tree of life. Okay, let's go to Proverbs 3 and 11. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. Okay? How do you get corrected? You get corrected by the scripture.